Hey everybody, do you remember when I showed you how to spool a bait caster using a box? Well, today I'm gonna show you something that works a little bit better and is a lot more efficient. Something that could save you a lot of money down the road. And this special piece of equipment is less than $20. So today's episode is all about a tool that's gonna help you spool your line, whether it be a bait caster or spinning gear, and will also help you save that line when you wanna swap it out and you wanna unspool it. All that's coming up right here, right now, on Live to Fish. Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to Live to Fish. I'm Joe, the host of the channel, and I wanna tell you thank you very much for being here at Live to Fish. I know you have a million choices of different fishing content to watch on YouTube, but you're here, and thank you very much. And since you're here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a thing, and it helps support the channel. And don't forget, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up, and don't forget to leave me a comment down in the comment section down below. If you're like me, you got a favorite combo, or maybe one, or maybe two, or maybe more, that you may use for a specific purpose, but then again, and sometimes it's good for other things. Like this Lose Carbon Fire Speed Stick, I really love it for frogging, but I also like it for flipping. It's rated from a quarter to one ounce, and those weights are perfect for a little heavier presentation. Right now I have 35 pound braid on here because I'm using it for frogging, but say I wanna change it over to flipping, say I wanna change it over and wanna use some floral on this. How do I get that done without wasting all of this line that I currently have on the spool? Well, I'm gonna show you. This is the Placino Fishing Line Spooler. Now don't let the name fool you, it's not just a spooler, it's also an unspooler. I already know what this does, but I haven't unboxed it yet and I haven't tried it. We're gonna do that together and we're gonna see how this works. Now I'm gonna leave a link in the video description on a video that I did previously on how to spool a bait caster. Now that was specific to bait casters. This spooler here will work with spinning gear with bait casters, doesn't really matter. Now if you take away anything from this video today, if you learn anything, I want you to remember two specific things. One, that abrasion when you're spooling your gear is not your friend. Abrasion can lead to break-offs, lost fish, lost lures, and that's not fun. All right, when I talk about abrasion and spooling your line, one thing to note is that if you're going to just take the spool, lay it on the ground, and uh, kind of spool your line that way, watch out for these notches here because those will put little nicks in your line, and that will definitely degrade it and will definitely change the strength of it. It's going to create some weak spots, and you're going to get some break-offs. Like I said, it could be a fish. Could be a lure. Either way, not good. And also tension. Tension of the line that you're spooling can result in backlashes sometimes on bait casters. It can also lead to coiling and other issues like wind knots when you're using spinning gear. So we're going to dive into this all-purpose spooler and unspooler from Placido right now. Let's head on over to the workbench and take a look. All right, here it is, the fishing line spooler by Placido. Let's get it opened up here. All right, looks like we have a line spooler. This must be like a carry bag. That's pretty cool. And in here, part of the spooler. Let's put that off to the side. Okay, I've seen some pictures. This looks like the clamp for a pole. This looks like the clamp that goes on a table. Inside we also have some instructions. Tells you everything in here. This is the spooler that we have right here, the four-way function spooler. So it includes this, includes that, all in one package. So the parts list, we have the spooling clamp, the line spooler stand, the line spooler holder, the line spool, and the storage bag. Here we go. How to set it up on a desktop. We're going to do this one first. We also have the unwinding option. And then... We're going to do how to set up on a fishing rod, which you can just bring it in your tackle bag. And we're going to go through the steps of that as well and the unwinding function for that. All right, let's get to it. All right, first we're going to go through a demonstration on how to do the spooling on the table clamp. We're going to go ahead and clamp this down to the table. Now, full disclosure, I did not pay for this kit. This was something that Placino sent out to me to do a review on and to also do a little demonstration on. 
Okay, with the line spooler stand firmly in place on the table, we're gonna go ahead and use the line spool holder. Now you can either enter this on the left side or the right side of the line spool stand. I'm gonna do it on the right side because I want to mimic a right hand retrieve when I do the unspooling of the reel. Now we go ahead and we slide this in here and there's this little uh, screw that you can lock it down with to make sure that it doesn't move. And once this is locked in place, we're gonna go ahead and open up the line spool holder so we can go ahead and put, uh, put our spool on there. Now we're gonna put an empty spool on. Again, we're going to be doing an unspooling first. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the screw off, get the guides removed, and go ahead and put my spool on. Now they were nice enough to include this empty spool in with the kit. This is something where if you don't have any empty spools from line you've used, you can use this to go ahead and uh, do your own spooling. So as you can see, it's got the little notches on it, so you can uh, set your line in there once you've uh, spooled it and tape it down to secure it. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the guide here, and I'm gonna put the other guide on the uh, left-hand side of it and tighten that down. And I'm gonna kind of center it here because I want it away from that handle a little bit. I wanna give it some, uh, some room so it doesn't get tangled up on anything. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten both of these ends of the guides down and uh, not too tight so I don't lock that thing in place, but just enough so that it keeps it sturdy so that when it's spinning, it doesn't wobble around too much. And here you can see me using the handle. Here is a little, um, I guess I would call this the drag that you can set on that handle to give it a little bit of resistance so you're not spinning too fast. This will keep you from going too fast and launching line off that reel as you unspool. Now the unspooling instructions call for you to just take your line and tie it onto the spool. But as you all know, if you do braid straight to the spool, it's just gonna spin. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a little piece of scotch tape here, attach it to the end of my braided line, and make sure that I secure it well to that spool to get that thing started the right way and so there's no slipping. Just making sure it's real good here, real tight, so I'm not gonna be slipping off there. All right, here we go with the reel that I have the braided line on. Now here we got the bail. I'm not gonna open up the bail. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen up the drag. I'm gonna loosen up the drag so that I have a little bit of resistance so that as that line is getting unspooled from the spool, again, not opening the bail, it's going to be turning, but I don't want it to turn so fast that I get a backlash. All right, so again, I'm working off the drag and I'm not working off the bail. It's very important to do so you don't get any backlashes. So here we go, it's all secured. I got that drag set up, give it a little pull, get a little test. And here we go, as I start turning here, you're gonna see it starts following that spool back and forth. I'm watching the guide on the reel itself because I wanna make sure that I'm getting an even distribution of the line across that empty spool. I don't want it uh, bunching all up in one section of it. You can kind of see I'm kind of dragging it across to make sure that it gets evenly distributed on that spool. Again, just to point out, since we're working off the drag, that guide on the reel is not gonna be moving back and forth. So you're gonna to have to manually move this back and forth across that empty spool to make sure that you have an even distribution of the line. Now here you can see time lapse. There's a pretty good even distribution of the braided line onto the empty spool, which is now the full spool. And here's the reel. You can see I have the backing line, which is mono. I've run into that now. And I put the backing line on there because if you put straight braid onto a reel, chances are it's gonna slip. So what I like to do, I like to secure it with a backing line of mono, just a little bit of it to secure it to that reel. And again, that keeps that uh, straight braid from slipping. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and do the spooling. I'm gonna go ahead and open up this, which I would call the drag, um, this little knob that kind of puts some tension on that spool. I wanna put enough on it so it's still a little tense so that there's a little bit of resistance when I'm going ahead and re-spooling my reel. I gotta put the drag, tighten the drag down on the, uh, the reel so I can actually get the line on it. Um, and now it's moving freely, but I don't want it to go too fast because I, what I don't want is slack line to be building up in the reel as I'm re-spooling it. I want it to be tight enough so that it definitely packs in there, but I don't want it too tight because I don't want it to pack in on itself and have problems with the line sticking too bad when you go ahead and try to cast. That'll uh, kind of mess you up. It'll stick too much if you pack it in too tight. All right, here we are time-lapsed again to the end of the spool. And uh, as you can see, I'm at the end here. Go ahead and disconnect that from the tape. And you can see it's evenly distributed onto the reel. That guy did its job. And uh, one thing you wanna make sure you do is make sure you tighten down that drag again. Don't leave it loose or else you're gonna run into issues when you do your first cast. Other than that, it's good to go. Now it's important here to point out the size of the line spool holder. You can see there's various different sizes of spools of line that you can get. Some skinny, some fat, and uh, I'll tell you what, it'll take it all. 
That didn't sound right, but uh, I apologize. I'm trying to make this a family-friendly channel, so please bear with me. All right, now we're going to look at the line spooler clamp. Now, the line spooler clamp is something that you use directly onto the rod to either spool or unspool. And this was uh, something I was honestly a little hesitant to use because I thought that the tension of putting this on the rod might leave some stress fractures or might uh, clamp on a little too hard. But I was pleasantly surprised to find the thick rubber padding was more than adequate to protect the rod from any damage. And again, you don't have to tighten this down with the uh, hand of God to keep it from moving around. Just kind of make it a little snug on there so it doesn't slide. So again, don't over tighten this thing. Just keep it tight enough so it uh, just touches it. And basically, it stays. It will not slide. So again, the same thing as the table clamp or the line spooler clamp that I used. You go ahead and you put the line spool holder in there and then uh, your spool of choice to either unspool or spool. So again, the same procedure used before, go ahead and tighten that down. And as you can see, you're all set and ready to go ahead and either unspool or spool a new line onto your reel. Again, this would be very portable, something that would definitely be cool to put in your gear bag and you could uh, do it on the fly. Now here's a closer look at that uh, rubber that is on the clamp. Again, that uh, secures onto your rod and makes sure that you don't have any fracture issues. But I would, again, highly recommend that you don't tighten it down too tight to make sure that you don't damage your rod. So here we're going to go ahead and take the uh, mesh storage bag that they give you. We're going to put all the components in that I would uh, put normally if I was going to take this uh, on the road with me. Going to go ahead and uh, put the rod clamp in there. We're going to go ahead and put the line spool holder and, again, the uh, empty spool. And probably put a few spools of line in there, too. Go ahead and cinch that down. It's all secured, ready to go. Pretty cool. Nice little package they put together. All right, so as you can see, a cheap investment, just under 20 bucks, gets you something that avoids abrasion, makes sure that you have the proper tension on your line on your spool when you're spooling, and also saves your line when you're swapping out line between spools. If you're interested in saving money and get more use out of your gear, I'm gonna leave a link to the product down in the video description down below. And also I wanna tell you, if you use the code PLG20, that's right, PLG20, when you order from that link, you're gonna save an extra 20%. That's what brings this normally down from $24.95 to just under $20. And at just under $20, how can you not afford to protect your investments. So again, that's all going to be down in the video description down below. Again, the code is PLG20 to save you 20% and the link to the product down there below as well. And now it's time for Catch of the Week. And that's right, I say Catch of the Week because obviously we're in the dog days of summer. A lot of people have not been putting in their submissions because maybe they're not catching the fish. Or maybe they just don't want to be hosted on Live to Fish. I don't know. Either way, this is the catch of the week, and this is Angling Spiders. That's right, Sean and Kieran from over at Angling Spiders got their PB Pike out on a trip in Canada, and I'm not gonna spoil the details of everything, of how they came about this trip, of how big these fish are to make it their PB, you got to go over and check them out. I'm going to leave a link down in the video description to the video that I'm talking about and the video that these pictures came from. Sean and Kieran, great job out there. Now, if you want your catches or your channel showcased on Live to Fish, I do this every Friday. It's Catches of the Week, and you can email them right down here to the email down below. And again, I'll leave that down in the video description as well. All right, that's all I got this week. Thanks for stopping in. More fish in action coming up on Live to Fish. So be safe and be well. And as always, Live to Fish. Take care, everybody.